Hi everyone, nice to have you all back here on Bromberg News. I hope you had a beautiful weekend. We just had our Thanksgiving weekend. The weather was beautiful. The fall colors are gorgeous. And my cardinals are back at my bird feeder. So I'm really thankful for that. Continuing talking about different types of bird fruit, I would like to talk about peanut feeding, which is completely overlooked. I don't know why. If you think about shelled peanuts leave no mess. I mean, you don't have to worry about peanuts killing your grass. And peanuts attract a variety of woodpeckers and also nuthatches. These are the kind of birds that will stay with you all year long. They will never abandon you for warmer climates and they will provide hours of entertainment. Some people do complain that this feeder empties really fast but there is a reason for it you see peanuts especially shelled peanuts just like sunflower hearts are exposed to the elements so when they absorb too much moisture they grow mold and they develop aflatoxins which are really harmful to birds and humans so this is why this feeder holds only 1.3 pounds of shelled peanuts so that birds empty it in one or two days and that you have to refill it more frequently keeping your birds healthy. On the last episode, I said that we would go into detail about seven steps that you can take to help bird populations. Today, I'd like to talk about step number seven, which is counting and reporting birds. You see, this Saturday, October the 19th, is the October Big Day. This is when everyone is encouraged to count birds and then log them with eBird. You don't actually have to be counting them for 24 hours. All you have to do is count birds for 10 minutes in your backyard and then log them with eBirds. And that will be really helpful. Linda Alger has a question about hummingbirds and ants. She has hummingbird feeders with red nectar, white nectar, homemade nectar. But no matter what, after a few days, those feeders fill up with ants. But hummingbirds don't seem to mind. Linda, however, is a bit concerned whether this is healthy for hummingbirds. Hi, Linda. So you've got problems with ants getting into your hummingbird feeders. First of all, it doesn't matter to the ants or the hummers for that matter whether your sugar water is clear or red. But the first thing I would check is whether your feeder has any leakages. Dripping sweet water is a real attraction to ants. Sometimes the leakages are not obvious, especially if your feeder is located in the hot sun. Hot weather causes plastic to expand which can lead to leakages. So make sure your feeder is in the shade. I'm not sure what kind of hummingbird feeder you're using either, but some designs are better than others and less prone to leakage. You might also try hanging your feeder by a thin fishing line, which is hard for the ants to climb down upon. And some folks apply Vaseline or some other oily liquid on the line attached to the feeder. But be careful, you don't want to get your birds having that on their feathers. And you do have to keep reapplying these substances to keep them effective. If you can find out how the ants are getting up into your feeder, you might be able to head them off at the pass and install commercial ant traps or even a water moat. If they're coming up a pole, for instance, you could tie some bay leaves or mint leaves around it near the base. Ants don't like either one of those kinds of leaves. You could also try moving your feeder around to different locations to put the ants off. And above all, keep your feeder clean and free of any sticky sugar water on the outside. What bird comes to mind when you think about a bird that's capable of flapping its wings really fast? Hummingbirds, of course. It's incredible that these birds can flap their wings at 75 to 90 beats a second. But have you ever heard about the clubbed winged mannequin? That's a bird species that lives in the cloud forest on the western slopes of the Andes Mountains in Colombia, in Ecuador. In order to create its mating call, this bird has to contract its muscles 107 times a second. The sound is actually quite peculiar.
The clubwood mannequin uses the same techniques as cicadas and crickets do when they rub their legs. But this is the only bird and actually the only vertebrate in the world who can contract its muscles this fast. Imagine what kind of shape we would be if we could contract our muscles this quickly. And uh, David has additional thoughts on the 3 billion birds lost in North America. A few weeks ago, a study appeared in a prestigious peer-reviewed scientific journal that basically concluded that North America has lost 3 billion birds in just five decades. That's about a quarter of the birds that were here 50 years ago. It's not the same as shooting billions of passenger pigeons into extinction in a very short span of time. This is 3 billion birds from 12 different avian families, including aerial insect-eating birds, grassland birds, and shorebirds, being lost to a plethora of interrelated factors, ranging from habitat loss and degradation, changing to farming practices, chemical pesticides, declines in insect populations, free-ranging cats, glass windows, and climate warming. Whether you believe these actual published numbers or not, it's patently obvious that there are less birds than in the past. But there might be another factor that is not yet being considered. The significant increase in the numbers of bird-killing raptorial birds like merlins, peregrine falcons, and cooper's hawks during that same time period because we banned the use of organochlorine chemicals like DDT, which were thinning their eggshells. It's not that the hawks and falcons are eating songbirds into oblivion, but instead, perhaps they're somehow affecting their presence in areas where we would normally see them, or more important, where we do our citizen science counts. It's also possible that vulnerable songbirds are also going radio silent during our singing bird censuses to avoid being found by predators. In any case, this is just food for thought for now, but it's definitely worth investigating. With all the sad news about the loss of birds in North America, I thought I would share a story that shows us that with just a little bit of effort, we can actually reverse the process. The cerulean warbler has been in steady decline for the past 25 years. But then, since about 2005 or so, the numbers stopped dropping as dramatically, which means that the population is slowly climbing back. And even though there are no clear explanations as to why this is happening, there are a couple of things that have been done. For example, along the eastern seaboard, a lot of forest is being protected. And then in Colombia, a designated cerulean warbler preservation area has been created where nothing but uh, shade-grown coffee is grown. So you see, all we have to do to preserve birds is actually preserve their habitats. And that can be done by either consuming less or maybe getting involved with an initiative in your area that is trying to preserve a piece of forest. And another positive story, this one is about the Kirtland's warbler. It's a funny bird that likes to breed in young jack pine forest in Michigan in Ontario. The only problem is that jack pines only grow after wildfires which have been suppressed in those areas. In 1970s, the numbers of Kirtland's warblers were down to about 167 breeding pairs. But with all the preservation initiatives by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife, their numbers numbers have been brought up to 2,000 and just now the Kirtland's warbler has been taken off the endangered list. I just hope they will continue to prosper. Well, this is it for you on this episode. Uh, here are a couple of videos from Dave O'Neill who lives in Ontario and he loves feeding peanuts to his nut hatches and woodpeckers. And again, don't forget to participate in the October Big Day on October 19th. Take care and I'll see you in two weeks. Thank you.